Okay, this is really, really important. This is a brand new study, 2022, gut microbiota composition is associated with SARS-CoV-2 and the vaccines. Let me show you what I mean. All right, this was just conducted. It's a very, very serious study, and they're trying to figure out what does the gut microbiota have to do with the response to the COVID vaccines, and how is it related? What are the new findings? They demonstrated for the first time that baseline gut microbiota, which is the bugs that live in your gut composition, can predict the immune response to COVID-19 vaccines and vaccine-related adverse events. If you don't have the right microbiota, you're in trouble. Okay, I am not a doctor. This guy is, Dr. Anthony Fauci. He says if you got vaccinated, you're okay. You're never going to get COVID. He's been four times vaccinated, and he just got COVID. So the Senate is really coming after him, saying, well, how could you say all these things? I can tell you what is going on is that people that have a weak immune system are being infected, and they will continuously be, be affected, and they will have long COVID, and they will have every other type of disease possible because their gut does not have the correct probacterias to respond to invasions. Probacterias create mucus and enzymes and catalysts, and they break down the things that are trying to attack you. People that have problems with their digestive systems are way more likely to get every disease there is. Now, I would like to know what Anthony Fauci's digestive system is like. I have no idea. That's the kind of thing you can't tell by just looking at a person. But if they have loose stool, constipation, stomach cramps, bloating, gas, acid reflux, all of those things point to the fact that they will become infected by virtually anything that gets into their digestive system that wants to attack them. Now, some will get attacked voraciously and just be, they'll die. Some will be attacked less and less and less, depending upon how good your immune system is. That's just quite, totally obvious. And the immune system now is totally obvious that it's related to the probacteria in your body. And they are finding out this, but it's extremely glacial, the pace, that they're willing to talk about it. All they're willing to talk about is vaccines. Take the vaccine, you're going to be fine. Well, that's not the case. And if people are having long COVID, Kids that normally would not have problems with some of their muscles, their heart muscles and so forth, are having those kind of issues because this particular type of disease, this COVID-19, appears to attack a collagen that is the rubbery collagen that's in your blood vessels, it's in your heart muscle, it's in your lungs, open them up and close them up. It's it's that co- that particular type of of molecule in your body is being broken down by these invading bacteria. Now, again, I am only a researcher. I am not a doctor. I'm not telling you to take anything, don't take anything. But this scares the hell out of me. They're going to be giving kids these shots. And the ones that have bad bowel system right now are going to be in trouble. I have a feeling. Now, if they can prove that that's not right, God bless them. But have they have they looked and tested on the kids that have these severe digestive issues? Because that's the things that cause them to have even um, autism and all kinds of diseases that are, are, haven't been related to these immune system issues. And kids have a weak digestive systems because they have virtually no digestive system at all when they're born. And unless they take that on and, and get it from their parents, from the vaginal delivery, from feces, and all of those things that they get into their body, it creates, it creates you know, um, resistance to invasion. And we've had huge success with people that have been ill for very long times, told, given no hope whatsoever, and then taken the probiotics have a lot of them have basically reversed their problems now this is my my um, channel on YouTube 
and I'm talking about Gulf War exposure, exact same thing. All of their immune system is being destroyed because the bacteria that's on and in their body has been attacked by these toxins. Now they're all getting sick and they're getting cancer and dying. This is an immune system recovery is possible. And how is it possible? It's to infuse with probiotics. Belfast Autism Study is about to start. And there's my friend, Marguerite, who I've been working with for years, her son has been very much helped by this probiotics. Enzymes from bacteria, are they the key to health? I'm really taking this hard because we're missing this and it's not being talked about. They're talking in the sun and all around all these different things, but nobody will discuss this particular issue with me. And all it is is probiotics. All right, this is my friend Marguerite O'Reilly from Belfast, Ireland. Her son had autism in the most severe end of the spectrum. I mean, way off the charts. And I've been working with her for about four years. And he has totally come around. And I wanted to say, and she has come around to a point where she actually went to Harvard online for gut microbiome issues to to really get involved in it. And she's one of the deepest involved that I have come across and I bless her and she, her son is blessed to have her. All right, this is the report I get from Marguerite. This is after about three or four years of her son being on this regime that we developed between Marguerite and I is with the probiotics basically and just gotta be at least twice a day and some other things, very tiny little things. But he, uh, he, I said, on a scale of 1 to 10, was John about a 10? And she said, no, he was worse than a 10. Because I said, how is he now compared to a 1 to 10 scale if he was a 10? And she was, he was worse than a 10. He had Tourette's, tics, muscle spasm, bowel problems, violence, OCDs, rituals, motor and sensory issues, nonverbal, humming, arm flapping, stimming. He was just in his own world, and nobody ever knew he was even had any thoughts they did nothing knew nothing about him and it's all gone now only some stimming and that's when she misses the probiotics my son's main problem is his shyness everybody was laughing at him and pointing at him when he was because she would take him everywhere to try to keep him in society and they wanted to lock him away in a locked ward because he was a danger to people a danger to himself and they nobody even knew he was he was even there was anybody inside his body he couldn't talk. He couldn't communicate. And um, I said, can I use your statements in my, my video? And she says, of course you can. I'm starting teaching in September. She's, she has gone from being literally suicidal because she, there's nothing they could do and nothing could help her. And they wanted to lock her kid in a room for the rest of his life. And she was also, she had been hit by a car and had all kinds of immunosuppressive orders as well. So she started doing the regime, regime herself, and she's fine too. She says she's in Belfast Center now, five-story building, all people like me. It's not the charity. She's making a, working on a charity too. We're working on a networking to making our school and retreat center. And I said, wow, it's all coming together. This is fabulous. Da, da, da. And she says, Roger, three years ago I was suicidal. I was so sick. You're helping me and my son helped me help your helping my son helped my gastroimmune problems. I just got better and forgot she was sick until 2020. And then she, she missed for a while and then she was back in the hospital again because she was sick again. Um, you've done interstitium of COVID lung patients. My son said, mom, is that why you, you don't have asthma anymore? Because you take organic sulfur and probiotics like Roger says. Asthma, chronic pain, inflammatory problems, anxiety, gastroimmune problems, all gone. Now, this is something we're working on. Again, it's, it's related to pro-bacteria in your body. Airborne hazards, all of that stuff on your skin, you are saturated with, with bacteria. And they're single-celled organisms that live in uh, your skin in an area called interstitium. It's a layer in the skin, which is a, called a fluid filled highway where all of these little critters go back and forth from your guts where they live that's where they live they are dispatched to everywhere in your body to to kill all these things cancers 
everything in your body is under attack at, uh, continuously. And the only way you can stop it from being attacked is to have the correct probiotics in your body. Right now, people have taken antibiotics, and another thing is this Roundup. That's an issue because Roundup kills plants. The things in your body are plants. They're literally plants. They're bacteria. They're single-celled plant organisms. And Roundup, which is glyphosate, that chemical kills that particular type of plant life. And guess what? They know that. But they say, well, it doesn't hurt any human life, so we can use it, and you can eat glyphosate, it won't hurt you. And here's what they do. They spray it on the, all, all over the, the weeds. It kills them all. Now it's in the soil. They created special seeds that make plants allow the plants, these GMO, genetically modified organisms, plants, to live in that environment where all everything else dies. So they live there, they eat the glyphosate, and they don't care. But then you eat them, and you're eating life, glyphosate, and your bacteria does care. Now, are you going to eat enough of it to kill you? Probably not. But are you going to eat enough of it to make you weak, and your immune system weak, and kill off a lot of your good bacteria? Probably will. And this is the stuff right here, glyphosate, used widely, controls broadleaf weeds and grasses. But they made genetically modified plants so that they can grow in that without having to till the soil and everything. They just push, push them back in the ground and they grow right out of there. But within four weeks, they're still consuming glyphosate and it's being captured in that plant life that you eat, lettuce and so forth. All right, this is the stuff that's in Roundup, glyphosate. They spray it on all the plants to, to kill all the weeds, and then they plant food crops in there. And those food crops absorb the glyphosate and don't die because they're what they call genetic, genetically modified. They change their genetic structure so that it will tolerate this deadly plant killer. And now down here it says food safety. The residues of glyphosate on any food or feed item are safe for consumers. So they're saying you can eat it. It's, not, it's no problem. Go ahead and eat it. They comply with established tolerances. All right? Before allowing the use of a pesticide on food crops, EPA sets a tolerance or limit on how much pesticide residue can be legally remain on the food and feed products or commodities. I don't care how much is there. If there's some there, it's going to be going to be affecting your plant bacteria that's inside of you. All right? Now, they have so many genetically modified foods now, you may be eating a lot more than you think you are. Now, I don't know for a fact, but I, these are the kind of things, they just don't test for these kind of things. They want to, to push this stuff to the side so they can give you this. Due to its widespread use, trace amounts of glyphosate residents may be found in various fruits, vegetables, cereals, other foods, beverages, commodities. However, these trace amounts are not of concern for the consumer. I say we need to look into that a lot deeper. My son and his girlfriend are vegans. And I was thinking, boy, that's fabulous. He's going to be healthy. He's doing fabulous things for the environment. He won't even eat things that they use animals. He, I mean, he's a real animal advocate. And, you know, I mean, it, we, we do. We take advantage of all the animals that we use. And some of them are just absolutely horrifying conditions. But the point here is he's thinking that he's going to do fine by eating all these natural foods. Well, GMO is not natural. Now, I don't know if he's eating the GMO type of foods or he's eating just organically grown. Organically grown, they're not supposed to use any of these pesticides. And in that case, I'm 100% with it. But if he's eating a lot of GMO foods, and these kids are, and you don't even know nowadays, you just buy it and, you know, it's everywhere because they can grow it a lot cheaper because they don't have to do all kind of tilling of the soil and all these different modifications. But I think we got an issue, and I'm, I'm scared to death of these kids getting the COVID vaccines at this very young age when their their digestive system is not developed well enough and they are are, are going to have some of their bacteria will more than likely be damaged from glyphosate 
foods that they're eating. And at the same time, they will be under attack from these vaccines. This, this just pops up in the middle of everything I'm doing about the glycosate and the diet and the water. SciTech Daily, adjusting diet can reduce ADHD symptoms in children. It's not necessarily adjusting the diet. It's getting more probacteria in your gut. 